All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for your patience there. Again, my name is Tom Lyons. I'm a senior engineer over at Inflow Communications. Today, we're going to go over a quick Connect Client user training. We're going to go over how to use the Connect Client and what you can do to manipulate calls in the client, as well as some features that you can use within the client itself. Um, again, my name is Tom Lyons. I'm a senior support engineer and subject manager expert here over at Inflow Communications. Um, I have just about six years now of unified communications experience, um, very well versed in the Shortel, Mitel, um, PureCloud, and Ring Central applications for your PBX environment. A little bit about Inflow before we get started here. I um, wanted to go over some of our webinars coming up um, in case any of these are of interest to you. Um, on the 12th of November, we are going to have a technical webinar on how to apply SSL certificates the right way for your edge gateway and other devices in the system. Um, so we can help you make your system more secure. On the 14th, we have a webinar on MyTel's migration plans for your contact center. So what to expect, what to, what to look at moving forward um, for your MyTel contact center deployments. And then on the 11th of December, we have a webinar on the 14.2 to connect migration and what to expect. So how to prepare for it, what to expect for your users, um, user trainings moving forward and any differences in the platform. A Little bit about inflow communications. Uh, we do have a sole focus on unified communications and contact center solutions. Voice is what we do. We don't branch in other things like networking. Um, we have a sole focus on voice and as a result, everybody in the support environment is very well versed in the platforms that you guys are working with and will be able to assist you. We are a Mitel Platinum partner as well as partnered with Ring Central and Genesis Peer Club. We have offices and employees in 10 states and currently service over 180,000 endpoints, over 800 customers nationwide, and in many cases, even worldwide. And we are maniacal about the customer experience. We want to make sure we get you all the information that you desire and then some to make sure that your system's working exactly the way it should be and you're getting everything you can out of it. Here's a little snippet of some of our customers in the Shortel, um, Mitel, um, PureCloud, and Ring Central environments that we support. And as always, there is a little question box in your GoToWebinar um, application that you're using to view this. If you have any questions as we go along the way, please go ahead and throw those into the question box there, and I will answer those questions at the end of the webinar today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, this webinar is meant to show what we can do in the connect client itself um, as well as show you some of the settings that we can use with with the uh, client and the call manipulation that is involved in the client itself so as you can see here let me actually minimize this so that is not in the way you'll see here that i've got a um pane here that says connect on it. This is the actual connect client. And this will be very similar to how the client will look when you first log into it. Um, the client is fairly lightweight. It will manipulate calls on your desk phone or allow you to use a soft phone as well as look up people in the system, um, check your voicemails, change your greetings. You can do pretty much anything from here. And the first thing that we're gonna do today is we're gonna go over some quick call manipulation that you can do with the client. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to set up a quick call to my other extension that's right next to me. So give me one second while I get that set up and we'll go over the recent tabs and everything as we go through the client. But just to show you how this looks when I get this call and now the call is connected and I'll mute that. And there we go. So now we have a call connected here. Um, and I wanted to show you what this looks like right off the bat. Um, you can see in there, there's actually two places where this call is gonna show up. On the right side, you can see that I'm connected to somebody named Tim Reynolds, extension 120. That's what the number in parentheses is. You can see how long the call has been going. And there's also a hang up button as well as a hold button up at the top. You're gonna to see very similar on the left side at the bottom. This is actually where all of your active calls will show up. So um, you can see I currently have the one active call for that Tim Reynolds. The timer on the left matches the timer up up top on the right, that's just the total active time on the call. And I do have that hang up button. I have a hold button, which is that pause button. And then there's a little microphone button that allows you to mute or unmute your microphone. Um, this works the exact same way as the button that is on your desk phones if you use those. And if you are using a desk phone, uh, pressing this button on the client will mute your desk phone. It will also mute your, your uh, soft phone if you're using a soft phone like I am currently. 
Currently, I'm muted. You can see that by the by the way it's illuminated in orange on both sides. If I unmute this, it will change colors. I'm going to go ahead and keep that muted so we don't have any reverb. Um, going across the top here for a few things that you can do on these particular calls. So we've already established the mute. We've already established you do have a hangout button, which is the red button here. Um, and we do have hold, which is a button here. If I press hold, you'll notice that the call um, changes to an orange indicator that shows the amount of time that the call's been on hold. So you can actually track how long the call's been on hold um, as opposed to just the total time while this is occurring. And the hold button turns into a green phone button that is actually the on hold. And this does happen on both the calls in the left tab as well as in the top. If I click on the green phone, the, f the call is now live again and is back with me. Down below, there's a few other options for manipulating calls as well. Um, if you are using the uh, client to talk to another client user and you have the appropriate licensing, you can actually do one-to-one -one video conferencing using the client. That's what this turn on video camera button is for. With the click of a button, you can actually record your calls as well. Again, this is a permission setting that needs to be set up by your system administrator in order for you to be able to record calls. But if you do have that um, ability in your system, which is not turned on in my environment, um, you would be able to click this button to start recording calls, which would place a recording of the call in your voicemail box. And then the two right here are gonna be the ones that you use most, most often. So the, the person with the little plus sign is going to be add participant, which will be used for a conference call. And the phone with the arrow is for transferring. So I'm going to click on these and just kind of show you how these work and how they look. I'm going to click on add participant first. And you'll see when I do that, it gives me a new box down at the bottom that allows me to type a name or extension. Um, if I start typing a name or an extension, um, it'll start popping up names that will work for that. So if I start typing in one, two, for example, here, which is the extensions of my test users in my demo environment, you'll see that two other options in addition to the person I'm talking to have been added to um, the little list here, if I click on one, so for example, if I click on Fred, it will add him in here. And then it's gonna give me a couple options um, down below it. It's gonna have conference, consult, and intercom. Um, to go through what each one of these does, conference is going to immediately call Fred. It's gonna keep me on the line with Tim. It's going to call Fred, and if Fred picks up the call, um, Fred will automatically be added into the call with me and Tim. So it will be a three-way call at that point. Um, there is no warning there. When Fred picks up the call, he's not going to know that you're in a conference call. It will just start the conference call. Consult is how you let Fred know. So instead of actually bringing him directly into the call with Tim, what Consult is going to do is it's going to actually place Tim on hold, call Fred, and when you get on the, on the uh, phone with Fred, you can ask him if he's available for the conference, and these will actually be replaced with a yes and a no button to complete the conference. When you get that, then um, you can either hit yes, which will bring Fred into the conference, and if, or if he can't, when you hit no, it's going to disconnect your call with Fred, and it's going to immediately place you back on the, on the phone live with Tim. So it does take Tim off hold when you do that. That's important to note. And then intercom is kind of like a one-way consult. So you can intercom Fred in this particular case, see if he's available for the conference and then it works much the same way you can pull him into the call if he says he is or you can cancel and go right back to him um, so it works in much the same way there if i want to transfer instead there's a few more options but it works in very much the same way so if i click on transfer here and i'll do the same thing i'm going to bring up fred here um, you'll notice that there's a bunch of different buttons um, there's a transfer and consult those are going to work exactly the same way as the conference and consult for the conference work so if you do a transfer it's going to send the call directly to fred there's no prompting to see if Fred's available. It just sends it directly to his extension. If you hit consult, then it would put Tim on hold. It would call Fred, ask Fred if he's available to take Tim's call. If he is, then you can hit yes, and it will send the call right through. If not, you would hit no, and it was going to disconnect your call with Fred and send you right back to the line with Tim, and you will be on the line immediately. It will not be on hold. Intercom does the same as well. You can intercom the other user to see if they're available. But then we have a couple other options here. Um, the park button is kind of like a system hold. Um, so you can actually use park to send a call to a specific extension. Um, the nice thing about park, as opposed to just sending it directly to somebody's um, extension, is that 
anybody can use any phone in the short tail environment um, to pick up a parked call as, as long as they know the extension that you parked it on. So if you park it on a user's extension, for example, if I wanted to park this on 121, which is Fred, um, it would actually show up on, Fred, on Fred's communicator client, kind of like the active call that you see in the bottom left of the screen here. It will also flash a button on his phone if he has a desk phone. If it's not set to a specific extension, it's not gonna send a direct indicator, but that's okay. All anybody has to do is go to any phone in your environment, um, press the on park soft key, which is a standard button on every phone in the short tail environment um, when you're not on a call, enter the extension, hit on park again, and it's going to pull that call directly to them. So it's a nice thing to have if you are going to do things like um, send calls across the building where somebody might be up and moving around but needs to take a call. It's a nice thing to have. Um, also, we do have the option to do a whisper page, which is a one-way intercom. They can't actually talk back, so you can actually whisper to somebody and say, um, hey, we have a call in coming from this person, and then send it through so they at least have some kind of warning. And then finally, if you want to send it directly to the user's voicemail without, um, without sending it to their phone and ringing their phone, you can just hit this to voicemail button, which I'm actually going to do now to go ahead and hang up the call. And as you can see, as soon as I hit that button, my, my client collapses. I no longer have a call on the phone. Um, and that call is actually in Fred's voicemail now. Um, so right now I'm gonna actually kill that call so there isn't a voicemail waiting in there for me. There we go. So that's how you manipulate calls. Um, in order to start calls, there's this dial name or number field up at the top, which is very handy. You can start typing in a phone number. So if you wanted to call 503 or 503-555-1212, you can enter it in here. Um, and if I hit enter, it would dial. If I wanted to call somebody internally, I could start typing in the extension or their name. So you can see if I type one, two here, um, three people pop up, Fred Thompson, Phil Hardy, and Tim Reynolds, as well as a demo work group that I'm gonna show you some information on here in just a minute. Um, if I type in Phil, it pops up Phil as well. So you can do that all from this particular field. That's the easiest way to do um, quick call manipulation. Um, the other options you can do is you can actually set up contacts, which we're gonna go over here in just a second. Um, and in order to show you that, I'm actually gonna click on this star. Um, this is actually how you set up a user as favorites. You'll see this little star next to everybody. In fact, if I do this, you'll see it all. So you'll see next to Fred, Phil, and Tim, there's a star on the right side. If I click on Tim and Fred and um, click on those stars, it highlights them in blue. And that is going to add them to my favorites list. That comes in handy on the contacts tab, which is what we're gonna go over now. So when I click on contacts, you're gonna see there's a couple people in there. So Tim and Fred, which have the blue star here. And that's because they have been marked as favorites. Um, if you do have a lot of favorites, so if you've added 20 or 30 people, you can actually search for them by name or extension in this field here. It only searches through your contacts tab. Um, so you do have that capability. You can also make groups if you want for specific people. So um, if, uh, if I click on the groups tab up here, there's some buttons on the side that allow you to create these items. So if I click on this plus for new contact or group, I'm gonna click on add group. Let's just make it sales, for example, and then I can add people doing the same thing. I can type in the name or number. And when I do that, and I hit create, you'll see that there's a group for sales. If I create another group for engineering, oops, that was contact. There we go. And in this particular case, Tim should be in there, and I create a group. You'll see how it breaks it out. So I can see who belongs to which group so it's easier for me to find people. Um, I like to do it this way just because it's a little bit easier to go through and see how people are set up, um, as well as it's just easier for me to look through a group of particular people rather than doing search. Um, however, you can just search as well. So if I did like, if I just search for Tim, it's just gonna pop up Tim. If I did a search for one, two, because they all, they all match for that extension part, all three of them will show up. You can also, from these panes, um, you can create an all system contact. So if you have somebody that you want to um, get set up for a, why is that not popping up? There we go. For a um, off system user that you would call often, you can actually create 
create one by clicking on the plus sign, clicking on new contact, and then typing in their information. Um, so test user. And then we'll add that. Oh, interesting. That could be a part of my demo environment, but it, sh it should pop up in your favorites tab there. And it probably has something to do with that not working. Let's try this user. Yeah, that's got to be a bug in my demo environment, but they will show up in this area. And in fact, let's see if it got added. It did add the users. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And that should pop it up the way that I want. There we go. So now you can see the test user contact is built into the environment here. Um, so you can actually create off system contacts for that so that you can call them at a glance. The other thing that you can see in the contacts tab, you can see both Tim and Fred are showing as available. Um, in the client, you'll be able to see if they're on the phone with somebody. Depending on your permissions, you'll even be able, be able to see who they're on the phone with. Um, you'll also be able to see if they're in any sort of state, such as out of the office or unavailable, so that the so that they are set and do not disturb. In fact, if I go ahead and I set Tim on this side to out of office, you'll see that now Tim immediately shows out of office. Um, and you'll see there's a little red symbol with a white line in the middle, kind of like a do not enter sign. Any calls to Tim in this mode will mean that he is going to go directly to voicemail. Um, if Tim gets set to in a meeting, which shows a little bit different, you'll see that. And it will work the same, calls will go to voicemail, but it's just going to show you that Tim is currently in a meeting by doing this. Um, as far as the um, actual manipulation for this in the client for yourself, it's right under this available button here. So if I click on the available dropdown, You'll notice that there's a number of different options. You have in a meeting, out of office, on vacation, do not disturb, and custom. All these can be set up in the connect client options for different routing, but by default, all of the modes other than available are going to go to voicemail directly, um, which is the most common scenario. So that would be um, something that you could change if you wanted. Otherwise, if you want them to go to voicemail, you can. It's also important to note that every single one of these modes can have a different recorded greeting. Um, so you can record a specific greeting for out of the office, a specific generic, and I would recommend a generic greeting for being on vacation um, or in a meeting. That way you can toggle on the fly and your voicemail changes on the fly as well. Um, so that's an important and very nice piece of the system here. You'll also notice that when I click on this button, I do have the option to log out of the client. This is going to log you completely out and bring you back to the login splash screen. Um, so if you ever needed to change your user for whatever reason, you could do it from here. Um, to go through the rest of the tabs here real fast, um, we do have a recent tab as well. The recent tab is going to show you your last 100 calls, whether you made them, received them, missed them, they went to voicemail or whatever. You can tell in here um, where the call, how the calls worked depending on the arrows. All of my users' um, calls were outbound. If they were inbound, the arrow would be pointing down. And if I missed a call, there would be an arrow that bounces, like it bounced off the extension. And then finally, if there was a voicemail left, it will show up as a video tape recorder. Um, you can search all these by name or extension. You can search for missed calls only, which I don't have any of right now. And if I click on one of these, I can actually call the user, see all the calls that, they, that they've left me. I can even see if they've left me any specific voicemails or sent me any text messages, or um, I'm sorry, IM messages. IM is supported in the client. It's not something that we're gonna go over today though. Um, the voicemails tab is going to let you see all of your all your voicemails, all of your specifically unheard voicemails, and if you have any saved voicemails. Um, this is for your personal voicemail box. If I click on the voicemail here, I can listen to it. There's a little button on this side that would allow me to either listen through my desk phone if I had a desk phone assigned, or use my PC speakers, um, which is what I would use right now because I am using a PC headset to talk to you, and I do have my soft phone enabled, so I would use that. Play is going to play it for me. Um, if I hit forward, then I can send that to another user in the system. So if I click on forward, for example, I can look for a contact, just like before I can type a name or number and I can find them very easily. Um, I can actually record a preamble to the message if I need to, just say, hey, Fred, I just got this and it sounds like it's important. Um, I can mark it as urgent, which is gonna show an exclamation point in the client. I can mark it as private, which means this user that I forward it to can't actually forward it to anybody else. I can also request a read receipt, which will allow me to know when the user has gotten this voicemail. 
Um, so I do have all of those options um, available to me when I send that through. I can also even change the subject here so that um, it could say important message. And that would go through and actually show in the user's client if they're using the client. Now, if they're using the phone and they don't have a connect client, they will never see the subject. They'll just see that they have a voicemail. Um, if I if I listen to this voicemail, it's going to actually um, show itself um, as not bold, just standard. So if I mark it as heard here, for example, um, you'll see that it now shows just normal. If I mark it as unheard again, it's bold again. And you can do that by right clicking. Other things you can do in here that are important, um, if you need to save a copy of a voicemail and you have the permissions enabled, you can actually right click these voicemails in the client, download the voicemail as a WAV file. It'll ask you where you want to place it. It'll let you change the file name. And then you actually have a copy you can listen to in, in a normal program like Windows Media Player, for example. It can also be used for things like setting up greetings in the system. So if you're trying to set up an auto attendant message and you need a new greeting applied for it, then you can actually um, send yourself a voicemail, copy it, um, copy it down, download it as a WAV file, and now you have a greeting that you can use in the system that's already in the correct format. So that's a nice thing to have. And then finally, um, we're actually going to skip events. This is for Outlook integration. So if you have in, if you have uh, Gmail or Outlook integrated in your system, you can use this to to look at calendar events um, coming up. I don't have any, um, but this is where they would show up. Work groups, though, if you're a part of any work group, um, you can actually look at all of your details here. Um, you can see I'm a part of the demo work group. If I open up the work group details, I could show the agents that are in part of in this group. You can see right now only my user is a part of the group. You can even see that I'm currently on the phone. Um, and you can also see the voicemails for the group in the voicemails tab here. Um, so the voicemails will show up here. And just like before in your personal voicemail, um, if they're bolded, they haven't been listened to by anybody. If they are standard, somebody has listened to them. And if you click on them, you can do all the same stuff. You can you can forward it, you can delete it, you can listen to it. So you can do you can do all the things that you could before in your personal voicemail. Um, if you need to change any settings, you're gonna find those in the top left in this drop down here for connect. You'll click on settings. And you'll see there are a number of features available to you. I'm going to go over real quickly some of the more um, common options that you'll need to do, um, specifically call routing and voicemail. We're going to go and look at call routing first. Um, this is actually where you can change your voicemail greeting as well as how calls route. So you can see here there's a little wizard that you can use to start. You can also just change these, these uh, different things as needed for each particular call handling mode. And as you can see at the top, you this is actually manipulating my available handling mode. If I wanted to change like in a meeting or out of office or do not disturb, I can do that in here. And the most important thing for um, you as a user when you're starting in the MyTel environment, you want to make sure that you're totally set up for success is to record your greetings. Um, I, would, I would recommend recording the greetings both for an available state as well as any other states you're going to use right off the bat and to leave them fairly generic. So as an example, don't say that you're going to be out um, of the office for the Christmas holiday. Um, just say you're out of office on um, for the holiday. That way you can use that without having to re-record your greeting every single time. And the easiest way to do that is to select the call handling mode that you need. In this case, we'll leave it as available. You'll see where it will say no voicemail greeting recorded. If I click on record here, it's going to bring me to a page very similar to the voicemail playback where I can select if I want to use computer speakers or my desk phone. Hitting record will prompt me with a little beep in my headset and allow me to actually create a recording. Once I'm done with that recording, I can actually play it back and listen to it, make sure that it sounds the way that I want it to. Um, and then I can either save the recording, which will then save it specifically for that call handling mode, or I can discard it um, and I can move from there. If the system doesn't have a recorded greeting for you, um, it will play your recorded name, which the system forces you to do when you first log into the client. Um, and it will just say that your extension is unavailable and to leave a message. Um, I do highly recommend setting up a customized greeting. And um, as I kind of noted before, each one of these call handling modes has its own greeting, meaning that if you set up the available call handling mode greeting, but not the others, if you switch to another call handling mode, users that call you will get the default greeting. So you want to make sure that you set up a voicemail for each one of the modes that you're going to use. 
Um, other options in here, if you're using a soft phone, if you click on soft phone here, you can actually change the microphone that you're using. Um, for most of you, you probably won't need to worry about that, but if you do have several microphones, you can make sure that the correct mode is set up there. And you can also tell the system to set you up on your soft phone on boot, so that way when you first load the application, you are automatically assigned. Um, then the other pieces here that, that um, can be nice for you is notifications. Um, you can actually set it up to send email notifications for voicemails. Um, to your email address. The email address is actually set up on the back end. Um, so if that is incorrect, just let your administrator know. Um, you can also attach the voicemail as a WAV file, which will allow you to, just like just like downloading a voicemail from the client, um, allow you to listen to it from anywhere and even mark the voicemail as heard so that if you get a notification, it'll mark it as heard. Um, and that way um, you'll know that you've listened to it or if it's in the case of the work group, um, which is again, this is a back end setting that will make it so that other people aren't listening and responding to the same voicemails that you are. And with that said, that is what we have for you today for the Connect Client training. Um, it does not look like we currently have any questions, so I'll give you guys just a second to see if we have any pop up. And then I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share our customer resources with you as well. Okay. It looks like we don't have any direct questions. So, oh, I have one, it just says hi. Um, no worries. It looks like we have one question coming through. So we'll, we're just gonna wait a moment here. I do not have power routing available as a user setting. How would I turn that on for all users so that they can record their greetings? So power routing is different from recording the greetings. So to pull up the client again here real quick and I'll go to the settings here. Um, so the, the call, the uh, power routing that you're talking about in the call routing tab is actually for specialized routing for calls directly to your extension. So if, if one person calls that you don't want calling you, you can have you can have the um, the rules set up so that they go directly to voicemail or even get disconnected completely. You don't need that for changing changing your voicemail. That's going to be under availability routing, which is actually the default um, here. So anybody can record their greetings. As far as power routing goes, um, if you don't see that in your client, then that's something that we would want to that we would want to take a look at because anybody with the client should have that availability. So if you do have an issue with that and you don't see power routing set up uh, um, as an option in your Connect client, I would recommend giving us a call or starting a ticket with us so that we can take a look for you. Can you review messaging? Um, so I don't have the ability to do instant messaging in my demo environment, unfortunately. However, the way that it works, if I pop up, for example, Phil here, is there will be a button um, that looks like a chat box here. And the, um, the button will allow you to actually send a text message directly to the user. So you can see here in mine, sorry, messaging is not enabled. Looks like you're going to have to call. Um, if you have instant messaging capability, there will be a box here that will act kind of like an AOL instant messenger box um, that you can use for chat. And Yvonne, it's possible because there are settings on the back end, it's possible that the ability to change your call handling modes um, or the settings in the call handling modes has been disabled in your environment. So that is something that we will look at. That's the only reason that that should not be there or grayed out, but we'll make sure that that is the case for you. Any other questions, guys? Outlook integration, should Outlook integration be off to avoid switching call handling modes? If you don't want the Outlook integration and calendar integration to change your call handling mode to out of office every time that you um, have a meeting come up on your Outlook calendar, we do recommend turning that off. That's actually a good one here. And in order to do that here, if I click on settings and I click on Outlook, you want to uncheck this sync my exchange calendar with my Connect availability modes. So that will turn that off for you. All right, and it looks like that is all the questions that we had and we are out of time today as well. So I just wanna make sure that we get our current customer resources over to you guys. If you do need us for any, any reason, any extra information, or if you need some support on an issue, you can email us at support at inflowcommunications.com. You can also reach our support portal at support.inflowcommunications.com, which will allow you to see all of your tickets in the system at a glance, um, see the responses, and even see all the tickets in your organization that are with Inflow if you're an administrator of the system. 
You can also give us a call at 855-946-3569 or 855-9-INFLOW. We do have a three ring answer policy, so you're not gonna be waiting on hold for 10 minutes for a rep and anybody you get will be able to assist you with your problem. For information on inflow support packages, you can send us an email at sales at inflowcommunications.com or you can also reach us on the phone there at 844-446-3569. Um, and I did get one last question here. Did, can you email this training out to us? This training will be available in a few days on our website at inflowcom.com. Um, it is also going to be available on our YouTube channel at um, if you search for Inflow Communications. This as well as all of our previous webinars, including other Connect Client trainings, will be available there as well. So I would, I would check those in just a couple of days um, and you should see those popping up. And with that, my name is Tom Lyons again. I'm senior engineer over here at Inflow. Thank you very much for joining us for our webinar today. Um, and we do hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.